Hello everybody and welcome to this Jade Harvest gameplay video. In this video I'm going to try to explain how to play the Jade Harvester and not just which items you're going to use. So you're going to see me play through a Greater Rift 71. Hope I can make it. Um, and this video really has the purpose to show why you're choosing what you're choosing to do. Um, so I've at the moment completed a Greater Rift 74. Um, and 71 is quite doable for me. So um, in this video I've chosen to let go of the spirit vessel and choose the fetish sycophants instead to get the um, the tanks in front of me. This means I don't have to run the Bellus Transcendence but I can instead run the, with the Haunting Girdle. This means that I can spread my um, haunts twice as quickly. I can deal double the damage of the two set bonus uh, of Jade Harvester and uh, all in all it makes, makes for a much faster run. The downside is that I don't have Spirit Vessel. Um, this is why you should only do this if you're fairly certain that you're not gonna die in the Greater Rift uh, because if you're gonna die uh, it will be slower so you kind of have to pick a, um, a Greater Rift that's suitable for this run. Additionally um, what you're aiming for is um, items that combined give around 30 to 40 cooldown, re cooldown reduction uh, and around 30, 000, 30 million excuse me, toughness. Um, this is of course for Greater Rift 70, 75, you need around this one. Uh, this amount is toughness. If you're going higher, I suspect you're going to need more toughness. Um, but I suspect if you're going higher, you're going to have better gear. I have only augmented uh, two items uh, fairly badly, it seems, um, and I am only 792 in Paragon, so I have a lot of room left for a lot of intelligence. If you have better gear than me, you're gonna have more toughness by having more intelligence, and you can put the rest into damage. This means you can opt for items that don't have vitality on them, but instead have um, cooldown reduction on them. Likewise on the um, offhand and the helmet in the um, in the gem slot. So quickly I'm going to show you the skills I'm going to be using. I'm using the poison spirit for the damage, 20% damage bonus, Pyrenado for the gathering of maps and the damage increase, Logoswarm Swarm with Cloud of Insects reducing 25% of incoming damage against me. You'll note that I also have the Vile Hive with the pestilence runes, making the um, locust swarm spread more quickly. The soul harvest with any rune, basically. Spirit walk with jaunt. The extra second is valuable, even for a speedy run like this one. The horrify is needed for um, <coughs> both the additional armor and for stunning the maps in place. When you're gonna run into a big group of maps, you're gonna be horrifying to increase your armor to stun the maps. And then you're gonna kill some maps, and then Horrify will come back off cooldown. So you're gonna basically stun lock the monsters as long as you're spamming your soul harvest and killing stuff. So I'm gonna be using fetish sacrifice. You're gonna have 15 of these up at all times. They're gonna be taking taking some shots, uh, especially on the rift. Some rift guardians. This is useful um, because the rift guardian will simply attack the fetish sacrifice, and you only have to avoid when they do something special. Also, on any other occasion, um, these are going to take some hits for you. Creeping Death, you need this. Grave Injustice to reduce the cooldowns when you kill maps. And the Confidence Ritual for the additional damage. If you feel like you're dying or you could, <coughs> you don't need the damage or anything like that, you can go for the Swarmland Attunement for amazing survivability. Or you can choose to go for either Gruesome Feast or Pierce the Veil. If you're going to go damage, I advise you to go for the Confidence Ritual though, it's just 25% additional damage on every boom you do. Alright, for the items, um, I'm going to assume that you kind of know what Jade Harvester is all about, <coughs> but uh, the Sacred Harvester is so that your Soul Harvest stacks up to 10 times, giving you a lot of bonus intelligence and a lot of bonus movement speed. I think, yeah. A lot of bonus movement speed, which is all good, especially combined with the Lacumbus ornament, giving you 60% damage reduction 
um, you need these two. The jade set, the pan, uh, the boots, I'm sorry, with the um, well, intelligence, vitality, armor, and movement speed, and as much just as much, much golden health pickup radius as possible. The pants, intelligence, vitality, armor in two seconds. The gloves, I recommend going with the intelligence, vitality, critical damage, and critical chance. You can opt to go for the cooldown reduction if you have enough vitality to spare. The uh, Jade Harvester shoulders, intelligence, vitality, cooldown reduction, and horn damage. The uh, helmet with intelligence, vitality, critical hit chance, uh, and I recommend the cooldown reduction gem here. You can choose to go for the uh, bonus life if you need that. The chest with intelligence, vitality, haunt damage in three seconds, and you are going to be running with the critical in the armor slot for the double the damage. <coughs> Additionally, the weapon will be the furnace um, because you're going to be only booming when there's a uh, elite, so you're going to be killing elites in the setup, and 50% bonus damage is just making that so much more easy. The Ring of Emptiness, of course, doubles every damage you do, because all enemies are going to be having Locust Swarm and Haunt on them. Alright, for the offhand, you can choose to use the Vile Hive, as I have, for the fast spread of the Locust Swarm. This is good for speedruns, or you can choose to go for the Cat, which makes it easier to run between targets. Um, this is a preference, and for a speedrun it doesn't really matter. The convention of elements I find to be the best single um, ring, and because you're using the compass ropes and the traveler's pledge as a set, you can only have a single ring not combined with anything. Uh, you can choose to go for the unity, but uh, that's a big damage loss, uh, because you're booming on the poison. Um, and you don't really need the unity for this one. So haunting girdles, as I explained, and the compass rows and travelers pledge um, are going to increase damage while standing still and reducing damage while while, um, while moving. Uh, I'm going to show this in action and explain what I'm doing while I'm doing it. Uh, the gems are esoteric alteration for amazing. Um, Resistance bonus, Bane of the Trap for bonus damage, and the Bane of the String for killing bosses and killing Rift Guardians. <coughs> so, we're going to jump right into this and we're going to empower it because we need some gems. Alright. So, at first, I'm fairly vulnerable because I haven't got the Soul Harvest stacks. So, the first thing I'm going to do is, is to just get those 10 stacks up while not dying. So I'm waiting for the poison and then I'm going to boom. Yes. And then I'm gonna horrify to give me some bonus armor. Gonna run in, gonna see that I skip these. Gonna run. This is... Okay, here's an elite. Okay, so we're gonna fear the targets, we're gonna stun them, we're gonna stand still and we're gonna boom them. It's important to stand still to get this bonus for as much that wasn't supposed to happen for as long as possible. And then you're going to boom when the poison's up. It's actually fairly simple. It's uh, difficult to um, get used to, but actually standing still besides a big boss is the reason we have the Fetish Psychopath, because he's not hitting us. So. I apologize if the music from the game is too loud. Actually, we're going to switch that down a bit. Uh, hope that's better for you. Um, so, more maps. I'm going to pull a bit of maps here. Going to get some mana back. And now we're in a position to actually pull a bit more because at the frost we have a long time before anything damage related comes up. Okay, now we're gonna boom. Standing still to get the stubbing for direction, and just booming like crazy. You'll see that the boss, is all, uh, the elite, is almost dead just from standing still, having the 100% bonus damage, and just boom. This is fairly safe. I'm doing it again, standing still, boom. This is fairly safe. I'm not really at risk of dying right now, because, well. You have enough cooldown reduction, and if you just run when you're afraid of taking damage, 
you'll reduce the damage taken. And you don't really need all this standing still shenanigans when um, fighting trash maps. Just do whatever you like at this at those. Um, you'll see. <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, you'll see that the horrify is actually pretty good, even though you're not going to fear any targets. So, at this point, I'm just gonna restack. No damage, just restacking. Standing still, standing still, standing still. And booming with the poison. Sometimes you can wait a bit with the um, with the poison. If you only need one boom to kill a group, you can wait a bit for uh, for a higher bonus. You'll see. I can actually wait for the last second of the poison and just boom for even more. This is um, only really advisable if you know if you know you're not going to take damage. Because you must remember that the damage taken is increased every time you stand still. Well, comparatively. You reduce less, basically. Some mana, thank you. And some fear. Standing still. No elites, but, you know, standing still is good anyway. And after a couple of booms, you need to reapply your Locust Swarm. Otherwise, the damage bonus is gonna disappear. The, practically the only reason you're gonna be um, casting Locust Swarm is to get the Ring of Emptiness to proc for 100% bonus damage. And right now I'm just hoping that the uh, trash will follow. And you're standing still, standing still, standing still, standing still, boom, boom. Um, and this is the reason why I hate shielding. This one didn't take any damage from those two booms. Going to be dead anyway. Oh, power pylon, sweet. Boom, boom. You don't really have to do those those few maps, but uh, you know, with power pylon, everything's easy. Standing still, standing still, standing still, standing still, hunting up, hunting, doing two booms. They're dead. It's all about measuring when you can do what you need to do. Um, this is one I see when a lot of well lower greater rift jade players on YouTube is that they don't really move the way they need to. Jade is all about conserving your cooldowns correctly and uh, making sure that you don't take damage when you don't have to take damage. Mm. Uh, and then it's about taking these, these risks. Sometimes all of these mobs would be dead, and other times something booms you at the wrong time, and you're dead. Getting the stacks. Haunting, haunting, fearing, haunting, haunting. Getting the stacks. And boom, and boom. And boom. R running, because of the arcane. Oh, and I need to not die. Notice how I'm running when I fear dying because, well, reduces damage. Standing still when I'm not in risk of dying. Uh, also, I recommend that you have a button uh, simply for moving. Um, for me, the, it's number five uh, because sometimes you need to move and you can't risk misclicking, uh, just clicking on the screen somewhere. Um, because you'll be dead in within a second. It's the the window of, uh, of failure is quite small with this build, especially when you're running with the no spirit vessel setup. Also, no spirit vessel is actually pretty good practice, I find, for act for running high grade rifts, because with this setup, you're um, playing on the limit. Uh, you're always in some risk of dying, um, so you have to be careful at all times. Um, and if you have the spirit vessel, you can kind of let go at some points. Um, shielding, hmm. shielding is actually uh, by far the best uh, thing you can have because you can stand still, not take damage, and just boom, 
the hell out of anything without moving. Uh, would be perfect if we could get an elite right about now. Perfect, thank you. Because then you can just stand in here and booming, don't really care. And, uh, well, double elite action, sweet. Um, and just dealing all your damage. This is much more valuable than a power pylon, um, which only increases the damage, but makes you actually have to flee for most of the time. I find myself dying more than not when I have a power pylon because I just want to kill something. Um, the dangerous thing about a shielding pylon is that, well, it expires right now, uh, and if I'm not careful, I just die. In this situation, you might actually want to move around um, if you're not sh certain if you're going to be able to kill enough mobs or not. Um, with practice, I've come to know when I can kill and when I cannot. Um, but like in any other thing, you won't know unless you try it. Uh, so just try dealing the, the, the damage. Um, and you will die a few times. Um, but then you can know the limits. Because finding the limits is all about the jade. You can only gain your toughness, you, you can only gain your damage if you actually kill something. Um, which differs it from a lot of other builds, and that's why I enjoy playing it. Um, because you have to kill to get your cooldowns, you have to get cooldowns to get your damage, you have to get damage to get your toughness, and it's all in a circle like that. Um, You'll see here that the Fittest Sacrifants actually tank pretty much all the damage. I can just stand still, have the 100% bonus damage up, and just basically just one aing him. Um, pretty pretty easy to kill most Rift Guardians this way. Um, hmm, what do we need? Uh, this one. And you'll see me be... <laughs> 90% more than lucky. Alright, this was my um, take on uh, how to run a uh, Jade Harvester setup. I will come back with another video of me trying with the Spirit Vessel instead of the Fetish Sycophants, um, as well as some new ideas on how much toughness you're going to need uh, and how much uh, having 40 plus cooldown reduction does for you. So I guess I'll see you in another video. Thank you.